Hello! For today's video, I'm doing a review of The Witch Boy by Molly Knox Ostertag, uh, published by Scholastic. Uh, so, this is the first part of a trilogy. Uh, I will still need to track down the other, I'll still need to get the other two books. Um, but, uh, so yeah, first part of a trilogy. Uh, the Witch Boy Trilogy. The other two are uh, The Hidden Witch and The Midwinter Witch. Uh, this one was published in 2017. Hidden Witch, 2018. Midwinter Witch, 2019. Uh, so yeah, I will definitely need to check uh, those other two out because this one was really good. I really liked this one. Uh, the premise is uh aster is uh he's 13 years old uh everyone in his family has uh some type of magic uh boys grow up to be shapeshifters girls are raised to be witches aster has not yet learned how to shapeshift um he's sort of fallen behind on that and he is fascinated by witchcraft. He wants to learn the magic of the girls, um, but it's forbidden. Uh, they're not boys aren't allowed to learn how to be witches. Um, he studies in secret. And uh, causes him some problem. Uh, he becomes friends with a, uh, a non-magic uh, girl by the name of uh, Charlie. Or actually, non-conforming, gender non-conforming. Uh, but yeah, he becomes friends with uh, another kid named uh, Charlie. No, yeah, no, nah, who is, at least in this book, at least in this particular book, I think Charlie uh, presents as a girl. Um, yeah. Which also isn't really allowed. You're not, you know, they're supposed to keep magic secret. Um, but he sort of accidentally reveals it to her. Um, and she encourages him to keep studying it, even though he's not supposed to. Uh, some of the other boys start going missing. And Aster. Aster believes that he can help by using the magic that he's been learning. Um, but obviously worries that, you know, revealing that he knows magic will get him in trouble. Especially once he's told the, told a story about uh, last time a boy tried to learn magic and went crazy and had to be banished. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So it's really good. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's just, you know, fuck about fucking gender norms and gender rules. Um, and it is very good. Uh, really nice art. Uh, Molly Knox Ostertag is an uh, excellent artist. Just really pretty, expressive art. She's got a lot of love for uh, sort of for silent panels, especially for sort of sets, you know, for having a bunch of silent panels. That is a fairly common thing. Good use of color for setting tone and everything. So. Yeah, so great art. Uh, and really well written story. Uh, it is a middle grade graphic novel. So the writing is very much uh, appropriate for that age group. 
Uh, it's funny. Uh, I first became aware of uh, Ostertag when she was the artist for... Because she was the artist for a strong female protagonist. A superhero webcomic. Which was very much not middle grade. Uh, it was very much sort of more mature content, not because of anything sexual, but because of just really heavy themes. Um, but she has really changed to present herself as being like, or not, I mean, like she has in more recent years really excelled at stuff for younger audiences, for middle grade uh, audiences. Um, sadly, a uh, strong female protagonist has been on hiatus since uh, 2018, which is a shame. Uh, they got through like seven volumes, I think. So they got a lot of it. I mean, it was from 2012 to 2018, six years, and there was a lot uh, in it. So, shame that it went on uh, hiatus, but obviously she's getting better paying work at this point. Um, in addition to the the Witch Boy trilogy, um, she's written uh, what else is it? Uh, The Girl from the Sea which is one that I really want to read. Um, another one that looks really good. Uh, and she has also worked in animation for a long time. Um, she was a designer on Star vs. the Forces of Evil, uh, and she is a writer for uh, The Owl House and for Thundercats Roar. So yeah, she's uh, yeah, you know, been involved in a lot of stuff. I mean, she's like she's had she's got a really good career going, which is great because she absolutely deserves it. She is really good at what she does. Um, just phenomenal artist, just exceptional at what she does. Uh. The Witch Boy trilogy, the Witch Boy series, uh, trilogy of books, was actually optioned by Netflix. Uh, they are, apparently, it's st it seems to still be in production. Uh, that Netflix is adapting it as, uh, an animated movie. Um, apparently Minky Lee was, uh, attached to direct. That may not be the case anymore. Not sure. Um, there's no release date or anything for it, uh, so no idea what's going on with it. Um, hopefully it does get made because it's, uh, it's really good and something that absolutely younger readers, middle grade and up, would absolutely, uh, enjoy. It is very enjoyable. Um, on a side note, Ostertag is also married to uh, Nate Stevenson, uh, who is best known for as the creator of uh, creator of Nimona, co-writer of Lumberjanes, and the creator and showrunner of uh, She-Ra and the Princesses of Power from Netflix. Uh, so he has had uh, a pretty damn good uh, career as well. And uh, Stevenson does uh, has credited Ostertag as being, you know, pretty influential uh, in uh, the Netflix She-Ra series, um, including a uh, fairly major plot twist in the final season. So. Uh, so, yeah, they are a comics and animation power couple. Uh, really. Because they are just, you know, 
They've done a lot of really good stuff. Um, this one, pretty sure this one may have won some awards, but I'm not sure. Can't really see. Well, maybe no awards, I'm not sure. Anyway. Like I said, uh, yeah. Nate himself, uh, so Alex Ertag's uh, husband, Nate, is himself uh, a trans man who's, you know, who spent several, who spent quite a lot of time uh, wrestling with uh, gender issues and all that sort of thing. Uh, so, makes sense that gender norms would be something that uh, Ostertag would, uh, would think about a fair bit and would uh, insert into her own works as well. So, that is definitely a big part of this particular uh, comic. Also worth mentioning that it is, like, the fact that Scholastic is publisher. That's a pretty big deal, honestly. Like, Scholastic, it's, it's so great that Scholastic is, uh, you know, is big into comics. This probably got into a lot more places than, uh, a lot of, than most so-called mainstream comics do. Um... So yeah, she probably got a uh, pretty good advance for this and yeah, good on her for that. So yeah, so that, yeah, that seems like about uh, enough stuff to say about uh, about this one. Like I said, definitely very much recommend it. It's, uh, it's a great read. Uh, the next book that I will be reading is going to be The Girl Who Would Be King by uh, Kelly Thompson. Yeah, and Kelly Thompson is somebody that I'm more familiar with as a comic book writer. Um, she's done some stuff at Marvel. She did uh, she did the Gem and the Holograms comic uh, for IDW not long ago, uh, a few years back. Um, launched, she launched it with uh, Sophie Campbell, who's amazing. Sophie Campbell's amazing. Um, yeah. So she wrote that comic. She's worked with uh, Meredith McLaren, one of my all-time favorite comic artists, on a few things. Um, she's just wrapping up a run on Captain Marvel over at Marvel right now. Uh, so that's where I'm familiar with Kelly Thompson is her comic book work. Uh, this is a prose novel. So very much looking forward to reading through this one just to see if her prose work is as good as her comic book work. Anyway, that seems like a good place to end. Don't think I've really got anything else to say about any of this. So, yeah. yeah, The Witch Boy by Molly Knox Ostertag. Great middle grade graphic novel, very much worth reading, even if you are not in middle grade yourself. It's still, uh, <laughs> It's still a very, uh, very good read, very enjoyable read, and just really good art. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you in another video.